Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Activities for People Living at Home with Dementia. We are proud to offer this series with funding from the Area Agency on Aging and the United Way of Tarrant County. These programs are recorded and are made available for viewing through a YouTube channel for future use. I am Martha Brown, your host for today's activities. The Fort Worth Museum of Science and History is bringing items about weaving, and I'm not exactly sure what this entails, so I'm going to be quiet and turn it over to the Fort Worth Museum. Take it away. Thank you so much. Again, good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. I bet you're enjoying this weather outside because it's wonderful. And yes. so we are y'all are y'all doing well for the most yes, part? Yes, yes. Great. Mm -hmm. Good to see y'all again. All right. So before we start, we have another person. Yay. Hey. His name is Caleb Laster. So he's now with the history department. So you'll see him from time to time. Good morning, Caleb. Oh. Yeah. So, so you can, you it's can good morning. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it is still very much the morning for me. <laughs> very it is morning. for us too. <laughs> <laughs> and so when it comes to weaving, we talked about baby clothes. We talked about kids' clothes last time. We're going to be keep bringing up textiles and things like that. But Caleb is working on. So a weaving, well, he's working with education for a homeschool workshop. And so their focus was on weaving. And so we just decided, he asked if we could kind of just kind of, you know, see if y'all would be interested in looking at some of these items as well, just because they've not been out. You know, we always try to find items for y'all that are not technically have been on display or it's been a very long time. And so even though we do have a couple of textile pieces, we have other things as well, because I don't know a lot about, about weaving. So we'll learn together. Now, when it comes to these items here, I remember many months ago when we were talking about the museum's collection and how, you know, typically we focus within the Southwest region of the United States, but these a lot of these items here are some of our international pieces and that is also because i don't know if y'all do remember when the museum actually was given its charter and become a full-fledged museum it had an international scope which is how we end up with some amazing pieces normally that we wouldn't be collecting today and so we'll be able to kind of point and see some of these which i like because again most of the time these items are not on display at the museum because it doesn't necessarily fit our focus or as far as just our mission. But that doesn't mean that we still can't bring them out from time to time. And I figure we'll start it off. Caleb and I are gonna tag team it. As always, feel free to interject or if you have questions, if you have observations, you know, I always take notes with y'all. So it'll, it'll be fun as always, so. I'm very curious about weaving because I personally don't have the patience for weaving. <laughs> you know, it's like embroidery work. I've already established that. I'm just not uh, uh. quite do it, but we'll go from there. All right. So I think, Caleb, we should start with like the loom itself because right. I'm very curious and I didn't realize we had this piece. I'm just going to walk over here on the side. Yep. And we can kind of talk about And good morning, way. Nancy. Good morning. Yay. <laughs> Uh, right. Kay Caleb. Yes, ma'am. I'm Martha Brown. Hi, Martha. Uh, some of us have uh, memory difficulties, especially me, and I'm hey. bad with names. So tell me the name of your co-host this morning. This is Lee. 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 Lee okay, thank you. <laughs> some days are better than others. I understand. <laughs> yes. That. And now we'll hush and let you get on with looms. <laughs> okay. So this is what's called, known as a backstrap loom, it is one of the most simplest forms of loom you will find throughout the world that people will still use today. Um, and basically, if Lee wants to yes. hold up this side of it, you just attach it to a pole or a wall or something, and then you will take this bottom end, and it'll normally have a strap that you would pull behind your back, and then you just use your own weight to keep it taut while you're weaving it. I didn't basically. know that. 
Mm -hmm. I, well, that so, was my next question was, why is it called back strap? Yep, because it literally straps behind your back. What? And you lean back and oh you lean at the same time. How fun. Yep. Yeah, I did fun. not know that. I, I did not know that. It sounds like a workout. I've yeah. never heard of it either. So uh, what region? So this one specifically is from Central Africa okay. um, in the Congo, uh, people known as the Kuba. And this is actually a really interesting piece because the Kuba are known uh, worldwide for making things out of raffia, mm. which is a type of palm tree that they dry out and grows native there. Mm -hmm. And so what we have here on this loom, half woven, as you might be able to see, is mm. actual raffia on it. Okay. So it's a nice little piece that coincides with a part of their culture as well as weaving in general. We're going to try to zoom in on yeah, that one lower bar here. Caleb, if you've got one going across your back, how do you get it started? Yeah, I wonder. <sighs> well, so you will start it at the bottom anyways. So it would start down here and you would have these uh, strung out already kind of loose. And then when you pull it back, you just start at the bottom closest to you as you go. And so one of the limitations of this is obviously how high you can reach, how wide you can reach as you go. Um, but a lot of times what they'll be able to do, I don't know if you can see this as well on this one, is that they can gather it um, at the bottom here. And so it kind of moves down as they continue to go on. Yes, we can. Which way? Like this? Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is so cool. Yeah. So as they're going, they can roll this up oh. and roll that. And so they're this mm. part where they're weaving the thread through is closer to them. Is that a piece of leather? Mm. Uh, where? I don't know about the, it looks like a large square of brown something. The big part in the middle. This part? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, this is the actual woven <gasps> mafia. <laughs> wow. That's how fine they can get it with that. Oh. Well, so, I'll take my hat off to them. I know, it's so, pretty um, Yes. So actually, this is, this, this is Don, um, what holds the whole thing together when you don't have uh, material to weave on it? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to um, figure out how it gets started as well. And so I'm so, assuming. Yeah, you'll just kind of, they'll just kind of make a knot over here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how well you can see that because it's pretty small. Okay. Um, but there's just kind of a knot that they'll tie right in there and then they'll just start from there. And then if say they get halfway through, like stop like right here, um, they'll kind of make a little loop and a knot and tie on a new piece and they'll keep oh. going on. So if you look, um, when we move on to another piece, uh, you can see where they've tied it off because it'll kind of poke out at the bottom. Well, and also on this part here, you see if it comes up on camera, there's, you can tell right here where they've like put, they've strapped it. Okay. So you've got the rafia here. And Lee, it's a little bit more secure. And we move it down about three inches. You're not in the camera range. Thank you. There you go. Okay. Yeah, zoom is exactly. You see that? Exactly. So it's, there's extra security right here. And then, like Caleb said, you would just make some, you would get your, you would knot it and you would get your starting point there. Mm -hmm. And while this is adding some, it's keeping it secure. Sure, yeah. And so they'll get it this fine, Lee, if you want to grab that comb right there. Yes. Now, this wasn't a specific comb for this person, but you'll use this uh, weaver's comb, mm -hmm. which lets you uh, push down these, and that will help with your density, so how thick it is, how oh. tight together it is. Um, yes. So something you can use your hands, but you typically a comb is going to get a mm -hmm. lot finer than that. Well, and I know it's a little bit difficult to see on the camera, but this stuff is very fine. I mean, it's, yes. it's probably what you're thinking it is. Um, it's kind of got the consistency of hay. It does. It, uh, Which for a reference. I can only imagine how hard it would be to weave something this tight mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. constantly breaking. 
the yeah. rafia or any or just i wouldn't even know how you tie it but i think it's wonderful and this is this is this is a great piece just i can't imagine this. when it comes to weaving rafia. i'm so used to thinking of yeah, weaving with different types of like cotton thread or wool and this is not the case because this to me seems like a challenge because it's not normally something i would think of when i think of weaving and it's so delicate and it is and this is a this is fairly thin too because obviously what we're working with but even then i'm lightly touching it it's i think it's great i think it's mm -hmm. very cool as far as what using a plant-based I wouldn't even know, like, how you start, I'd break it all the time. <laughs> is there a market, it. is there a market for this kind of thing, or is this an ancient thing that's not done anymore? I'm guessing it's still done within that region. I think this was from the 1950s, yes. so fairly recent that this was it is. Uh, purchased. Like Caleb said, it's still uh, a common practice amongst their culture, and then I I'm sure as far as maybe selling individual pieces or textiles or things like that, uh, the Kuba are, are part of what they live. Um, it's one of several, what kingdoms or certain Tri groups, tribes groups. within, uh, Zaire. And so it would not surprise me if they have individual styles or certain aesthetics to their culture. Wouldn't surprise <laughs> me at all, but I'm, 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 I'm almost positive that there's these cultures are still creating. They're still mm -hmm. working with weaving and textiles and things like that. How do you spell Kuba? K-U-B-A. K-U-B-A. Okay. And you mentioned Zaire. Is that Z-A-I-R-E? Yes. It's the okay. modern day uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Exactly. Yes. Congo. Okay. So if we wanted to look it up, we could look up any one of those words, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And again, <coughs> we actually have quite a few artifacts from Central Africa. From Central you know, relating to the Kuba Kingdom, or like he said, I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's interesting. Do you know when mm -hmm. what year? Like their accession? 60s. I don't know. Yeah, probably. there was like a period of time where museums were super into collecting African artifacts. And so it may have been around that time. I like, was, yes. They don't fit a lot of, a lot of museums mm -hmm. have them and they're like, why do they have this mm -hmm. permission? Why do we have it? It's yes. because they've had it forever. And, that makes sense to me, and it, I would not be surprised if our museum followed suit with I think just the sixty was probably. I think the sixty was around that time set of African, African art. Was. Yeah. <laughs> but surprisingly, we've got beautiful headdresses, we've got masks, we've got bracelets, textiles, textiles. bracelets, and mm -hmm. yes, we have a woven throne chair, not woven, a carved wooden chair. It's a very it, we identify it as a throne, but it also comes out of Africa. And I'm not quite sure because I've seen pictures of it. There's carved jaguars on it. No, not even a jaguar. It wouldn't be a jaguar because it's the wrong country. Yeah. No. Cheetah, leopard, something. Not they have jaguars there too. Do they? Yeah. I think it's Central America. But so there's a large cat on those, and I've never even opened that crate. I've just seen photos of it. But we have. We have that piece too. So. Always, Always finding something. Always new. finding something. Where should we move off now? Where should we move to? Maybe to Yay! what is the the wheat wheat pill. Wheat pill. Wheat pill. Wheat pill. Wheat pill. Spelled H U I P I L. Yes. So this Thank is you. P. So this is a uh, traditional dress worn in Southern Mexico and Guatemala, typically among indigenous cultures. Um, to me, it looks like a poncho, mm. um, but it's <laughs> connected at the bottom here. Yes. And uh, which I can kind can of hold up. Oh, yes. It so it's a little, it's not quite as open as a poncho and it's a bit more dress-like mm -hmm. in a sense. Yes. Um, but it is... You can definitely see uh, the woven qualities of it. Oh, for sure, yes. yes. And this is why I was talking about earlier on the inside. You can see where they tied off and started the new uh, mm -hmm. of the string mm -hmm. within it. 
And so sometimes people will cut that shorter on some pieces, other times they'll leave it like this. Um, the answer is soccer. Yes. I love yes. it. And I bet y'all are probably familiar with weevils or what you, as far as uh, when we think of Mexican American culture or Mexican culture, the uh, a lot of the dresses that are very colorful that have the heavy embroidery, that's also an example. And you would, the sash I'm assuming would just be worn around, around the waist. And you see several versions of these, just very colorful. Again, some are a little bit more ornate with embroidery work, but I'm trying to think. This one is also what mid mid-century. Mid Do you, people are they're still making these? You yeah. can still buy them. You can wear them a little bit later. I love the color scheme. I always have when I see these. We have several different varying styles within the collection. And I'm trying to think, is there a tag or I wonder? Always, you know how we get when we look at tags when it comes to clothing. Oh yeah. Tags, if there aren't, you know, I don't see any. No. It's your tag. But you never know what's on the inside of a garment. This one's not lying that we were even able to tell. Mm -hmm. Does the color mean anything? No. Not that I could find. Same here. I'm not. Other than. That's a really good question, though, Myra. So, Caleb, you find these in all colors? You can. Um, typically, I've seen red, white, mm -hmm. turquoise, purple, even maybe. Yeah. Yellow. Yellow, orange, uh, really all the bright, bright yeah, colors. Yeah, typically bright colors. I wonder if they dye their own thread. Good question. It's possible. Um, there are natural yeah. red dyes, yellow dyes that can be found within that yeah. area. <clears throat> Mexico pushing you will be a huge one. Yeah. Here. Yes. So yeah. So red dye comes from is it from the pear or the insect on the cactus? It's from the female insect's shell. Yes. So there's if you've ever seen a cactus, there's like the little white spots yes. on it. It's an insect, and if you crush that up it'll give you a red color. And oh, so that's- I'll be. A dye from. <clears throat> and, um, from a cactus. Yeah, mm -hmm. from an insect that lives on cacti. Oh, an They're insect. Cochineal. Yes. Okay. Cochineal. Yeah, cochineal. Yep. Now it's, this one, um, just looking at it roughly as far as, you know, we've already determined that it was what you said earlier than mid. It's 1960s, 1990s. 1960s, 1960s. And you can tell that we've got some more modern type um, ribbon. ribbon here of like what maybe nylon, polyester, yeah, something some right sort of here, synthetic. some sort of synthetic fiber. And then, but you also have a little bit more of a thicker thread here that I'm assuming is what cotton. cotton. Most of this is cotton. I'm just so much tell. So they, you know, they use a little bit of everything yeah, at this point. It's probably a bit more modern uh -huh. than. Uh, I might be thinking. I mean, I don't think it's made by hand. Mm, I would guess. I would guess just not. based on the time, but you know, you can't be sure. It's very well. You know, it's, it's very even. Mm -hmm. it's very uh, it could be. It could be on a hand loom. That's true. Which That's means awesome. it could still be very intricate, very straight mm -hmm. lines. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because uh, I've seen that done in, in, in we were in Thailand in hand looms. I'm a fan of this one. This is pretty. It is All right. very pretty. All right. So move Yay! over to some of our other woven objects. Okay. Please. Bye -bye. Oh. Bethany's going crazy. Oh. She's gone AWOL. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we were all out of focus. Yeah, this will be fine. This will be good. Yeah, I that's, that's our life, Martha. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thanks, Steve. Oh, that is. Oh, is it because we're moving this? Thanks for trying to figure out what's going on. Okay. You're good now. That is amazing that that's fabric that they've made out of raffia. Yes. I'm just going to move some things over. Okay. So, Oops. speaking of dyes, one of the most important dyes throughout all of history. 
was purple. We love purple. Good yep. to see you. Yeah. Gig so, and frogs. So this is a Egyptian bag. It was made in the mid century, so 1950s, but it was used during uh, ceremonies at Mount Sinai in Egypt. I don't know if it's Islamic or Christian. Um, I can't tell by the design on it yet, mm -hmm. but I like this piece because of the purple. So purple historically has been, was the color of royalty and especially in Europe because <laughs> you could only find it in a very specific sea, uh, sea slug that was Ooh. found off the coast of modern day Lebanon. Ooh. And it was like literally a singular gland that had to be extracted from it. And you oh get one drop from that one gland. And so it was incredibly expensive to make. Uh, I know. Yeah. They have they have found piles of millions of just the shells oh, so in excavation sites around uh, this area. Extinct now. Nope, can still find them. And there are other are they in danger? Not that I know of. Oh, there are other there are other types of snails too that they've found that can have that um within the Americas. So mm. like Peru, mm. some of those cultures had purple dye earlier too because they had they had access to those animals as well. So yes. All right. So this is velvet as well, which is also a type of woven fabric, um, but that they have kind of, if I remember right, they kind of shear the top of it, which gives it that fuzziness. Oh, snap. But you can't tell very well because you have to get kind of close, but you can still kind of see the right angles of the weave, but it has to be really close to see it. Can we zoom in? Maybe we're going to try to try? zoom. It might get blurry. That's as close as it gets. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautifully made. That's really cool, actually. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that they would cut. That this, well, I never I realized see, this was woven. I don't watch videos of it now. Uh, yeah. When I, when I first saw this, I thought it was a, a bag to, that holds a uh, crown royal. Uh, yes. The little velvet teen bags. Yes. yes. You're getting out of camera range again. Yeah, we're okay. we're working on it. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Now you're centered. There we go. There you go. How does it feel to be perfect? <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> so, what is the the yellow uh, threads made out of? That's an excellent question. I would guess cotton, some kind of cotton yarn. Yep, agreed. Um, and it's been, for example, this swirl pattern here. So like he said, it was some sort of a cotton thread or something, but it's been looped, but it's also been sewn by hand. And there's very little stitches to keep it in place. Oh. That keep it, keep that pattern. So there's like a few right around the center and the same here. Okay. There will be, there's like a little stitch right here. There's a little stitch right here. And so I'm assuming that that's how they were able to create this, these, mo like this motif on top of the velvet. I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. Wow. And for it to stay. And then I'm assuming, Caleb, yes. Do you think it was hand on the inside? It's a drawstring. Can take this out. And look. Okay. No. Silk. So it's lined. Satin. Satin, maybe. I don't, satin. Think, I don't think that's silk. There doesn't look like silk from here. There's something in the bag. <laughs> it's <laughs> paper towels. Oh. Paper. What a bummer. Probably shouldn't be there. You never know. Find <laughs> stuff in yep. pockets and bags. I love when you never know. Stuff like that. No. You never know what's in these things. But it does okay. have solid on the bottom. Okay. Well, that's good. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lining on the inside. It just looks nice. Mm -hmm. Still in decent condition. There's very little wear. I mean, a little bit on the bottom where the velvet is, but that's fairly typical. My, oh, my guess, still, oh, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. Do they still make this kind of thing today? 
I don't know. Um, I know there are still ceremonies taking place mm -hmm. in Mount Sinai. There's a church and a mosque that's built on it. So it's possible that they are still using things very similarly to this, dressing in that kind of garb. Mm -hmm. um, possible. I wouldn't be entirely surprised if this was maybe tourist quality mm -hmm. that they got there. Um, so that's my best guess. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. No. no. Yeah. I was thinking it was handkerchiefs. I go, well, you know, that's interesting. You never know. Yep. Well, everybody through time has always had a runny nose, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when you're going to get one when handling objects. So true. Yes. All right. What's that, Caleb? This is a silk hat from. Ooh, we do silk. like silk. Mm -hmm. Which is also a woven fabric. Mm. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. um, so this is from China, made around 1910. So the very end of the last dynasty, mm. known as the Qing. Mm. Um, and what's interesting about that is that the Qing were not a native Chinese dynasty. They actually came from just north of China in an area called Manchuria. If anybody's studied World War II history, that's the area that the Japanese first invaded during that time. And so the clothing style of that time was just slightly different than uh, what Chinese dress had been before then because officials and nobility had to wear a certain type of clothing. Okay. And so because of that, that style then disseminated through the rest of the populace. So this kind of hat is very typical of that era. Ooh. So you have a nice, this is a jade piece on top of it right here that you can see. Wow. You like jade too. Yep. Yeah. And then the rest is all silk as far as I can tell, the embroidery, everything. Thank you, Jim. Is this a chai's hat? Because it's very small. I believe so. Ooh. Oh, a child's hat? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Either that or it goes over a bun on the back of your head. That's the, the other thing I was thinking of. Yes. The hole Good in the question. Room. Yes, it does have a hole, doesn't it? It does. Maybe. It does Always. have a hole. Oh. Hole could be for the top knot. Mm hmm. Hair. <laughs> yeah. But didn't men at that time, didn't they have like a long, little, thin, a ponytail. Yeah. Braid or yes. ponytail. Yeah, had, yeah. I have seen called, photos of that. I can't remember. It's called a top knot, I think. Mm hmm. Yeah, that does look. I don't know if that's cotton or silk on the inside. I'm thinking it might. Well, well. Looks more, more cotton on the inside. It does look more cotton. So mm -hmm. it, the lining yeah. is cotton. And then it feels like there might be some padding. sort of padding on the inside of it as well to keep that form. Let me see here. This is it's very pretty. I mean, we've got a little bit of wear and tear along the edges, a little bit of fading, mm -hmm. but this, I mean, it's very pretty. I, the embroidery, I don't even know how, again, silk, how do you weave that exactly? Well, there, there are different types of silk weave, too. Um, that's what, what you see here is what most people think about silk. But there's also a kind of rough weave silk. Oh. Hmm. Uh, which they do a lot more in Thailand. And it's, 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 it's still silk, but it's not as fine threads. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I worked in a village one time where they actually drew the silkworms, took the thread off, you know, huh. did everything to make even cloth. I, I saw them make cloth for their looms. Princess Diana's dress was made from specific silkworms. Yes, yeah. Yes. Really? And, and, she, and, and she gave them to her uh, ladies-in-waiting, the silkworms, after they were done and dead in a little yeah. box. Well, a in Thailand, Thailand, what they do, and the silkworms are dead because they boil them to get the silk off, okay? 
So for them, that's food. Oh, well, I didn't. We, we ate the silkworms afterwards. Oh. Because that's protein. Protein, you're sure. right. Yeah, yeah. protein. I mean, no point in wasting. No, no. protein. Yeah, they're kind of, kind of bland. Yeah. But yeah, we had to eat some. <laughs> um, I mean, they're right there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Is the Lion King lying slimy yet satisfying? Yeah. But, but I watched them <laughs> actually, I watched them actually boil them and pull the silk strands off, you know. And huh. they, then, of course, you know, I can't remember what, what's the process where they make it into the thread. I can't remember that. Process. Oh, um, spinning? The, spinning. You know, spinning. The spinning part. Mm -hmm. Okay. They make it into the thread on the, they've got a spindle, I guess, a spindle they put mm -hmm. it on. Okay. And but it's a little thicker than some of the Chinese. They make it a little bit thicker, so it's a very beautiful. But it's a little rougher weave mm -hmm. than some of the Chinese silk. Steve, and you are a fountain of information. looks very rough, uh -huh. but it's a very beautiful. I've got some pieces here. Uh -oh. Interesting, Steve. You are a fountain of information. Mm -hmm. In fact, I've got, I've got a piece that one of our helpers gave to me one time that actually has old. So gold threads yes. within it. Oh, oh, your wow. gold. Okay. But they weave in, in between there. So wow. you have the silk and gold all together. You should oh, wow. show us some next time. I'll have to see if I can find it. You know, dig yeah. it out. Sure. <laughs> I get it. Uh, it's, it's, an it's an archaeological dig to get find it out. No, yeah. I know, but dig dig it out of where we're stored here in the house, mm -hmm. you know. We've moved so many times. I don't know where it is at this point, but yes. um, but Can they have a lot of things. My wife had a lot of things made from silk <laughs> when we lived in Thailand, just because it was so it was it was cheap there compared to here. Well, Steve, we so, need to do a, a show of of what you have. No kidding, no. that's what I'm thinking. No. Yeah, we'll see what I can find. Okay, good. Or if I remember, you know, <laughs> make, your, make yourself a note, Steve. Oh, I, if I write myself a note, it doesn't mean I'll remember. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we'll, re we'll remind you, Steve. Yeah, we'll oh. totally remind you, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Caleb, what is this item in front of you about 12 yes. inches from your fingers? Yes, please. So this. Is it a purse? It's a basket. <gasps> Yay! That can be tied on like a purse or like to your belt. Cool. So this is from, let me see if I can, let me check my note so I don't mispronounce this name. A that's a turtle. Yes, that's it's from I the Tohono Odom people, Ooh. which they are a uh, North American, Native American group that are around the Southern Arizona, kind of Northern Mexico mm. area. They're known for, uh, this is one of their baskets. It's made out of cactus, which is oh. this white part. And then I believe it's called Devil's Claw is this oh, dark yeah. part <clears throat> yeah so they don't they didn't dye any of their uh baskets or anything they just use the natural colors to weave these different shapes in them it's beautiful so hmm. yes now this is a turtle and i think you like like a carry top, bag yes yes yeah. i think these top parts are a deer or something okay i see that yeah that i'm curious about the holes does that go through a belt i think so yes i think you can tie it on so you can walk around and carry it with you oh oh i didn't even oh, see I like the back. yeah beautiful look at that where is this is and that new mexico southern yeah. arizona and northern oh. mexico okay thank you mm -hmm. so first impressions this is actually very well made. It has a little bit more weight to it. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's solid. It's a solid piece. And I have not seen this one. So to me, this one is very cool. It's in very good condition. I don't even see a lot of wear necessarily on it. Mm -hmm. Even the braiding through here is still in very good condition. And it is a solid piece. Mm -hmm. Awesome. this is 1910 so this is over 100 years old wow. and still i mean it feels mm -hmm. like you i just picked it up from a yeah, no, store it's mm -hmm. it's very well made we've got some nice i mean it's 
much i mean what cacti it's a pretty good fiber yeah i mean it's hardcore it's strong mm -hmm. it works and of course as far as just having that resource geographically speaking it would fit southern arizona northern mexico southwest area mm -hmm. gotta love cacti cactus like you say it has to be tough it does have to be tough but how fun i still don't i can't quite make that out yeah it's it's odd with it's the tail well, we, we can't see it we can't see it gotta move it up a little bit uh, oh wow that is odd maybe it's a camel almost, with something on the back it almost looks like a um dragon a Sorry. It's a turkey. Oh, a turkey. <laughs> yeah, I see feathers. Uh huh. No, I mean, yeah. turkeys are not four legged. That's true. That's yeah. true. Don't think they were in southern nope. Arizona. Hey, yeah. don't. You, you never know, if Caleb. Like if you want to get up, huh? yeah. <laughs> it, it, it could be one of their mythical animals. <laughs> yes, it could oh, be. Yeah. Oh, I bet yeah. that's right, Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bethany said a dinosaur. I'm not opposed to that. I mean, yeah, dinosaur, <laughs> dragon, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder how they made this. I'm assuming they start like the, maybe from the back part. Yeah. So you can kind of see where they've they yeah. started the circle up here and then so. wove it around like that. They did the back part first mm -hmm. and then connected them. Uh huh. Possibly kind maybe. of the two parts and then connected them. Oh, that makes sense to me. Matt. Tell me, tell me if lufa is made from cactus. It's not. No. It's not. Okay. It's made from a a, a, a plant that looks like a squash or a cucumber. Cucumber. That you just, you, in fact, you can grow them in this in Texas, yeah. and then you have to let them dry out and then clean them. Uh huh. Right. It's okay. Seed. Yeah. I was it's just seed. thinking how sturdy a lufa is, and trying to put it together with cactus fiber. I looked up cactus fiber on Google and it tried to give me supplements. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So evidently it's roughage, so it is strong. Roughage, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So you, I bet it is. <laughs> yeah. I love that. We learned something new. I always learn something new when I'm with y'all. There's <laughs> it, the our conversation. But I really like this one. Beth needs making oh there we go. There we go. There we go. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Now I like that piece. Yeah, no, it's a great piece. That's very beautiful. I feel like we're going to be using that one and that should go in a niche, yeah. a basket niche. Yeah. A basket niche would be fine. Yep. Okay. We're on the same we're page. We're on the same that. page. Yay. Yep. Can, can I ask another question real quick, please? Yes, of course. The thing you have in your hand, do you just put that, that's rod? This one? The, the, this one? That. Yeah. Yes. I was going to ask you what that was. So yeah. This is a uh, shuttlecock. Shuttlecock, so, okay. This is specifically is a net one, mm -hmm. so that's why it might look a little bit different if you've seen like a flying shuttle or something before that you weave between the lines. So it's just shaped a little bit differently. Um, this is from the okay. south. Oh, well, okay. Wait, I'm just gonna hold still, Bethany. <laughs> Don't move. Don't move, Caleb. Don't move, Caleb. Go. Not. Can y'all see Caleb? His shirt blends into the background, and I think yeah, yes. we see. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that the background was blue when I chose this shirt well, this morning. It looks purple in the in the studio, um, but it is not when it's on camera. <laughs> it completely changes color. That is true. So yeah, so it's the same basic idea where you would run whatever strand you were going to weave through your vertical fibers um, along this, and then you just would weave it in between like so. Okay. Are is they all wood? Yeah. Yes. yes. Like a giant That's Where is this from, Caleb? The South Pacific. <sighs> Where is that? Mm. South Pacific. And you said yeah. netting. Yes. So they're making nets. Yes. I wonder why. Fishing nets. <laughs> Fishing nets. Yes. So the yes. then to compare it, we have another net shuttlecock that's from the North and the Bering Sea area. Oh. So this is made out of tooth. Um, I would guess walrus, walrus. narwhal, yep. something like that. This actually dates back to like 100 BC, 680, mm -hmm. somewhere along that time. Wow. So that's just 
I thought that was cool, just how old it was. Yep. But you can okay. see that just the differences in material that they had available to them and time, you mm -hmm. know, size differences. So I'm confused with this one here. Mm -hmm. So you would put the thread through the groove. All right. So oh, okay. My okay, goodness. close, Caleb. Yeah, Caleb, tell us those years again, please. This one? Yes, please. Let me make, double make sure. 100 BC to 680 is the time period we have. For That's that. really nice. So they would have just, what, carved, carved this, mm -hmm. shaped it, and then attached. The they didn't waste anything, did they? Nope. No, uh, no, no design. It's just smooth. It is just smooth. Sorry, the lighting, y'all. Yeah, it's because it's white. A design would have caught the thread. Yep. Mm. Good point, Steve. That's why I wanted it smooth. Uh-huh. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yes. good point. You could you hold it like this and turn the back of the Oh yeah. Oh, we're getting pointers. There we go. This would help a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Not much, a little bit. I like that. Okay. Yeah. It's small, but it's great. so this would this would be for making small items. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I think so as well. Mm -hmm. nice, maybe. Okay. That, so is, the term shuttle cock is that for like all ever, generally that is what that thing that's sometimes called. Just, they'll just be called a shuttle. Shuttle. And that Red. is what's fed through. through it. The uh, loom or right that's what's attached. To. <laughs> well, the the warp is the the warp the one that's stationary, and the woof is the one that goes back and forth. Oh dear! I think the, I don't know. I think because I I looked this up, uh, I should know this. Go so okay. I would say the warp is the horizontal, and the weft is vertical. Now I'm double guessing myself. Uh. <laughs> we'll have to do part two, and you can tell us, Caleb. Yes. Right. Well, and even those terms like weft and I have to look those up because those are in our database and someone who's not familiar with weaving vertical. or those terms, you're like, I don't understand what okay. this is. So warp is vertical, weft is horizontal. Way to go, Kate. Okay. I mix that up. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, so can I ask another question about the one that was uh, um, made out of uh, Car wheel or something, the little, the little tiny one. Tooth one. Tooth, one. Tooth, yeah. Um, what kind of thread did they use to use for that? Now that that's a good question. That is a good question. Maybe, yeah. I, I was trying to think of what could be up there that would be a plane. Maybe, maybe, maybe some kind of fur or something. Yeah. Or they could have used sinew. You could have done sinew. sinew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sinew. You could have done sinew. Yeah. I'm trying to if there's a plant or something that yeah would live in a harsh climate cold climate for right, Myra and i were yeah or send you Myra and i were talking about maybe they were shaving woolly mammoths <laughs> yes maybe. i it mean could, could i be, like the way you think yes could be seen you it could be tree fibers <laughs> could be something like that tree fibers that's a good yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. could be tree fiber but you're right whatever it would be it would have to be ultra fine enough to <laughs> you'd be able to actually Roll right. a lot of it into something like, but strong like enough to this, hold strong to catch enough. a fish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to leave. Nancy, okay, Nancy thank you for being with us today. Bye, bye Nancy. Hey. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Nancy. Yes. Okay, for a, a, a modern. Ooh. We're going to do leaf peeping tomorrow, Nancy. Oh. She's <laughs> Well, we want to know about Caleb and where Caleb came from. I told you. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. You can pay me later, Lee. <laughs> I will. So I've grown up in Fort Worth all my life, pretty much. Um, I went to college at Abilene Christian University. I got an undergrad in history. And then I went to the University of East Anglia, which is in Norwich, England, to get my master's in museum studies and cultural heritage. Oh. Wow. Oh. Yeah. How yeah. fascinating that you can learn something like that and officially read books and go to class. Yeah, it was 
pretty amazing experience. What are your interests as far as history? <sighs> we all have our favorite time periods and regions. So mm -hmm. typically ancient history is where I like, I really like Central Asian history, mm -hmm. which does not, it's very hard to find, mm -hmm. especially in the- In the state, I mean, yeah, state. it is. Yeah, um, that's why I like it because it's different. There's a reason for that too. We'll have to yes. go on that one day. Um, but I also okay. really like turn of the century American history. So World War One, War of 1898, uh, progressive era stuff like that as well mm -hmm. um so but i really like almost any kind of history i'm just that kind of person yeah i want to give you an off the wall question caleb okay are you a person who um subscribes to the theory of reincarnation i am not <laughs> okay <laughs> you never know when people love particular kinds that is of very history. true absolutely yes okay. you never know you yeah. never know <laughs> i, I at high school, I didn't teach history, but I, I heard a lot of comments from kids because they're so bored with history. Is that oh. basically because they don't have things like this? They they, they hear facts and numbers and right. things, dates and things like that. Yeah, and, and and they don't get the what history actually is. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's actually people, the lives of people. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and and so that's uh, I would have been one of those horrible history teachers because i would rebel against everything that they're trying right. to teach for. i can see that about you steve uh, <laughs> that, that's why even though i taught electronics i tried to teach history in a different light mm -hmm. you know because there's so much more to history than just facts and the numbers and the dates oh, yes. people's names you know uh because it's life and that's what history is and i wish i wish more I wish you guys had a program to go into to do this in high school. Oh my gosh, you and me Teach both. Teach them what oh, history man. is, you know, uh, and the importance of it. Well, and I'm, I'm, I agree with you, Steve. I'm one of those people where I refuse when people say, I don't like history. I'm like, you just haven't found something yeah. that interests you. Mm -hmm. Pick something, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. whether you're looking at firearms or textiles or pottery or oral histories, music, I don't care, find something, there, there is something. People well, just... And I agree with that. Unfortunately, our curriculums these days in the school system don't allow that, you know? No. Uh, at least you're, if you're in that category, you've got to take your standardized test. Now, yep. sometimes some of the seniors get a little bit more because the teachers can be more creative right. how they approach it. But those in the, you know, they're dealing oh, no, with Santa's no. test. It is so, to me, it's so depressing, you know, because they just don't have, the teachers can't be creative because they have to be the same. Every teacher has to teach the same thing all the time. Exactly. And, and to me, that I couldn't do that. That's why I'm glad I wasn't in one of those courts. <laughs> I think that's also why I'm not a teacher mm -hmm. either, because I just think you would, from the bureaucracy to the administration to everything, and then maybe not being able to teach history a certain way. Yep, don't even, don't get me started, Steve. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, so We're gonna fun. go off on a tangent. We'll be here Caleb. all day. I have we'll another question for Caleb. All the way. So sorry about that. I have another Hi, question for Caleb. Yes, ma'am. Did you ever learn to drive on the wrong side of the road? I did not. <laughs> I, I did bike on the wrong side of the road and almost got run over by multiple cars um because i was not in shape enough to be biking around an english city but uh that was an experience hey it's no it's no problem driving yeah, on the yeah. other side of the road I yeah, say I I put, the the drivers, that. put the driver's wheel to the center of the road and you're always right yep that's oh, yeah. Yeah. an american oh, roads are off nice. i went to the center of the road yep, yep. he's a traveler so there you yep. go <laughs> and I had no trouble with it either. I, I, I just jumped right into it, I pro basically. There's a hard part as we came back to the States. Every once in a while, I caught myself driving and turning into the wrong lane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it usually wasn't in traffic, you know, so. That, that usually was, wasn't. Usually oh, my. Wasn't yeah, no, 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 yeah. So, Lee, what are you going to do for us next time? And when are you coming back? Uh, well, let's see. We are on the calendar for next month. Oh, and good. I'm thinking we're still going to work with textiles, clothing. I thought about coats. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, November 16th. Yes. That's Coach. a good one going into the winter season. That'd be oh, good. We would love yeah. that. Yeah. We would love that. I might, we might be able to find just across, just whether it's, you know, wool, cotton, there's some lovely, I don't know if you call them shawls or women's jackets, like turn of the century mm -hmm. that, you know, only come to like right here, like mm -hmm. yeah. that would accompany a dress or something that are very well made. They're beautiful as far as just the craftsmanship. And y'all you, know how much I like delving into to those. And so we might just pull some of those heavier pieces and, and show y'all them. Mm -hmm. It'll be but, chilly by then and we'll appreciate them more. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I like looking at anything kind of made, well, American made if it's here. Some, so I think some of the pieces that I'm pulling may have actually come from Europe, but yes. Awesome. That's awesome. great. Yep. Okay. That sounds good, right? Well, let's take a look at what's coming up then tomorrow for our gang. Hang in there and you can find out. Okay. Kate Lee. Yay. Okay. Peggy Spear is going to talk about leaf peeping tomorrow, and she is from the Eamon Carter Museum of American Art. Um, Lee, I told her you said hello. Yay, thank you. And she, she giggled. Yes, <laughs> she did. <laughs> never that far. I'm never that far. She's a very nice, she's a very sweet, very... Very, very smart sweet. person. We agree. You should do yeah. a program together. I'm game for that. <laughs> yeah, really. We can get together you know, with Peggy. And, good. Yeah. You know, okay. Some of somebody okay. put on your uh, antlers and then say history hey. and all that together. That'd be wonderful. Yes, it would. That. I may just have to randomly email her or something. Oh. Hey, <laughs> and not so random. Well, Caleb, welcome back to the old. Yes, Caleb. Um, thank you. Home yes. to Fort Worth. <laughs> I think we've gotten a jewel in getting you hired here. Oh, thank absolutely. You. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So is it going to be the two of you next time? Probably. Um, we've been kind of busy doing other, other things and whatnot. And, and I'm training Caleb to become comfortable with programs. And so if there's ever a time where I have to like transition off or I can't make something, then you have you have Caleb. Okay, hey, Caleb, we will be kind. Thank yes. you. You don't have that. to be. You don't have to be. <laughs> <laughs> I would appreciate it. I mean, you might. I mean, Lee, Lee knows about us already. We're not always kind. Yeah, are we? that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but but you know, just hey. throw the book at him. It'll be fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. we've kind of already hazed him. So if y'all want to haze him, right. like, I'm. Or we could just talk bad luck, about man. me when she's not. Here. Or you can do that too. Like that's fair. that's fair. Bethany uh, won't let that happen. I think she would. No, no. <laughs> Bethany and I are like this. Yeah. So good luck with that, Caleb. You're right. odd man out. I'll figure out. <laughs> yes. Does anybody, both. Does anybody have anything they want to great. talk about, or any chat? Uh, sh anything to share today? Nope. No. Oh, but Caleb. By the way, this is Woodstock. Okay, and yes, I wanted to Woodstock. ask you. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Woodstock. <laughs> and he's he's the uh <laughs> talking about he's you. the mascot. He is the mascot. Yeah. Yes, it is. Well, we're gonna sign off for here. Thank you all so much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank this you. Is great. Everybody Bye, tomorrow. Thank you.